You will all most likely know by now that I am a huge racing game fan, and it's by far one of my favourite game genres of any type. Generally I prefer my racers a little on the arcade side, but every now and again a simulation based game comes along and blows me away. That game was the PlayStation's Formula 1, which arrived in 1996. Everything about the game totally blew me away from the great graphics, detailed tracks and level of realism I had never before seen in a Formula 1 racing game. Not only that, but the additional commentary by Murray Walker was superb. Jump forward to 1998 and Formula 1 World Grand Prix was released on the Nintendo 64. Developed by Paradigm Entertainment and published by Video System, this game too gripped me the same way which Formula 1 had done on the original PlayStation. Never before had a console Formula 1 game had so many features and managed to get them all right at the same time. Now naturally I do have a bias as I'm British so Formula 1 ranks up there with crumpets as to what I consider our national treasures. But even if Formula 1 is not typically your thing then I think this is still a game that has enough cool factors to make it an essential play. Unlike FIFA who hog their license rights, the FIA are quite happy to give the rights to anyone who asks and so the game has the essentials for a great simulation. All the drivers from the 1997 season, all of the real tracks and most importantly the cars themselves are all in the game in full glory. For Canadians you may be slightly disappointed to know that Jacques Villeneuve is not present in the game but you can quickly rename him from Williams driver in the options mode. There are plenty of game modes to crash into here. You have the standard exhibition which will let you choose your track, driver and conditions and race them through a chosen number of laps. Secondly you have the Grand Prix mode and this is a game's career mode where you'll race the entire 1997 season consisting of 17 tracks and will partake in qualifiers and warm ups before the big race itself. There's a surprising amount of customization you can make to your car's settings here and anyone who likes to tinker with their motors at the weekend will be in their absolute element and the changes you make will have a real life impact on how your car performs. There is also the time trial mode for those who like to set records and support for up to two players in the multiplayer mode. Sadly there is no option for four player races though. For me one of the most interesting additions and game modes was the challenge mode. This is where you'll choose a scenario which happened in real life 1997 Formula 1 and try to compete the mission objectives. These are broken down into offensive, defences and trouble. The first two are pretty self explanatory but the trouble mode brings you a scenario when your car is facing a technical problem and you need to find a way to overcome that. The presentation of the challenge mode is sublime and there is a backstory of the race and the context of the challenge to really gear you up for taking it on. They also pack quite a challenge, so even the most dedicated of challenges will have hours of competition trying to complete them all. As well as the basic game modes you can also turn on the 1997 mode in the settings and what this does is add real life events from the 1997 season into your races. The crashes and events of the race will all happen at the exact same time they did in the real race which is quite a sight to see. Being an all out simulation game there is quite a learning curve. If you're used to more arcade style games then it would be easy to walk into this one with the expectation of coming first in every race, but trust me that won't happen. To help ease you into the game you have skill levels which you can choose which will automate some of the controls of the car. If you choose rookie for example the computer will automatically break at the right time to help you ease around those hairpin turns. Select champion skill however and you'll pretty much be on your own and the AI is as tough as nails and there's a decent amount of aggression in the other drivers who act realistically to combat your attempts to overtake and block their movement. When you consider that, that there are 22 drivers in an F1 race and each of the courses in the game has many polygons to build up the lengthy tracks you may have thought that the console would struggle with so much going on at the same time. Luckily Paradigm and heck knows how have managed to not only get the level of detail just about right but also keep the game running at a very consistent frame rate. There is the expected level of blurriness that most N64 games have, but considering this is quite an early N64 game, everything looks superb in my opinion. Just change some of the weather effects to see that it really is a great looking game. My personal favourite being the rain, which has a great misting effect which at the time I hadn't seen on another N64 game. Speaking of the graphics though, the attention to detail is great. All of the tracks look the part, even down to the minor details like the dashboards in the cockpit mode or the yacht harbour in the Monaco track. Even advertising is all in the right place with the right brands, although Nintendo censorship has removed any references to cigarette brands and alcohol. 
There are five viewpoints in total which you can race from, and whilst the far view makes seeing turns a whole lot easier whilst you're still memorising the tracks, it's any of the close-up or cockpit views that really make your adrenaline flow as you tightly nip past a fast rival or drift onto the skid pan. We've all played racing games with dodgy audio and it's sad to say that sometimes it can be a game changer. After all, who wants to race a Ferrari and have it sound like a Fiat? Well you'll be pleased to know that the quality of audio is great and many of the engine noises are taken directly from recordings for the real cars themselves. It adds a level of credibility to the game and the effects of hitting other cars or running over gravel just help this even further to immerse you into the game. During races you'll also have the option of hearing your pit crew who will give you advice as you race such as details on position changes, areas of your car which are damaged and how far ahead your opponents are. The only downside to the sound is that in the game there is no dynamic sound so it's sometimes difficult to tell if an opponent is getting close to you and it doesn't fade in or out based on their position. It is only a minor point and most people wouldn't notice it but once you do it becomes hard not to notice again. Quite simply for its time, I think this was one of the best Formula 1 games on any console. It was quickly surpassed, but for a brief moment in time, I could recount days straight playing the career mode and trying to compete all of the challenges with my brother. Considering that the expansion pack wasn't out yet, this game was a technical marvel, and due to the lack of popularity in most parts of the world for Formula 1, I think this is a game which a lot of people haven't played before. It's perhaps one of the easiest and cheapest games to buy for the console, and on the back of that you really should own it. It's easy to pick up, hard to master and has enough features and details to keep even the most die-hard Formula 1 fan happy for weeks. But for today's discussion in the comments down below, let me know your favourite ever Formula 1 driver or car manufacturer. And if you've played the game, let me know what you think about it and share your opinions with others. As always, thanks for watching and until next time.